Hi and welcome to Jessie James Beads. My name is Jem. Today we're going to be creating from the April 2023 Magical Mystery Bead Box Stories from the Sea. It's a really beautifully curated collection of beads and components and together we're going to create the most gorgeous summery anklets. So here's a couple of super simple pieces that I also made from this box. Very, very easy to create layered earrings. I also used the gorgeous mermaid's tail to create this sparkly and dangly bracelet. We're going to be breaking down this design into smaller elements and we're going to begin by creating this little charm together using one of your shell disc beads, about an inch and a half of 18 gauge round wire and the spacer of your choice. I love these, it's a beautiful sort of antique golden colour. We're going to break down today's techniques into very, very easy bite size chunks. So let's create this charm. I have one and a half inches of 18 gauge round wire. This is craft wire, but it could equally be your German style. We're going to be utilizing some round nose pliers today, and I'm going to use the largest section on my round nose pliers to create a round form, which we're going to turn into a simple loop. So if I turn the pliers around you can very easily create that round form and then I'm going to use my chain nose pliers to pull the wire away in a straight line from that angle. Now I forgot to trim the very very end here and it's key that I can show you how to fix this kind of issue like so. So I've just trimmed the very very end away and I now have a beautifully smooth end cut. When you're working with a simple loop such as this once you've created that round form, I make sure that it's good and strong by squishing it once or twice and then I will always open only half of that loop as if I'm opening a jump ring. So let's ease that open to create a small gap and then we can pop on our beautiful mother of pearl shell disc bead. Let's close that loop up in exactly the same way and give that joint just a tiny, tiny squish. Not crushing anywhere wires cross over, always keeping everything super simple. We pop the bead in the centre and then what I'm going to do now is to pull the wire away again on the other side of that spacer bead, like so. And then I'm going to use those round nose pliers to create a second loop on the far side, trying to keep it in a similar position on the pliers. Now I can take that set of pliers a little bit further away and rotate that around and then just bring the tail over at the very, very end. If you wish to, you can use a slightly longer piece of wire to make your life easier. I'm actually using scraps from my scrap pot. So there's a crossover of a very small distance. I'm just going to trim that away at the point where it crosses over at the angle that we originally pulled away. So again, I'm just going to make sure that that loop is completely closed up. The cut part touches the angle. One or two squishes with my pliers and then I'm going to open that up and leave that ready for use. The next charm we're going to create uses one of these large faceted coated rondelle crystal beads. Really, really beautiful. You can, of course, change this up to use any of the beads that catch your eye. This is the one that I've chosen to work with today. So I have about two and a half to three inches of wire. And before we get going, I'm going to trim away that unattractive end section. Pop that into my scrap pot. So we have about two and a half inches now and we're going to commence with those round nose pliers again and I'm going to start at this time at the shallow end, the smaller end of my round nose pliers and I'm going to start rotating that wire around to create a round form, much the same as we did for our open and closable simple loop. What I'm going to do now is to create a coil. Now you can create coils in whatever size you desire. We're going to keep this one relatively small. So I'm going to push the coil into my non-dominant forefinger. You can simply invert this if you are left dominant. And I'm going to very, very slowly, moving the pliers and my fingers, each about 50% of the workload, in opposite direction so that I have a spiral that begins, travels around once, and then travels around a second time. Now, once you've got the hang of your spiraling, you can make these really large and all by themselves, they make a really attractive charm bracelet. However, today what we're going to do is to create a bend in the wire that comes away from our coil. If I grip underneath, grip hold of that long length of wire and just push so that the coil sits 
on the end of that section of wire as if it's a little lollipop or something like that. Then we're going to add on our bead and in exactly the same way as we did before we're going to create an angle coming away on the other side of that bead. However now I'm working with a crystal glass I want to make sure there's a teeny tiny gap between my pliers and the bead. Just push the wire away gently so that it comes away at an angle. You might like to make slightly more of a bend, like so. Just making sure that we're being respectful of our bead. I'm going to make quite a large round form again, and this will be a simple loop. So we can twist that around and around and around, bring the end over the top. Once you're happy that you've got a round shape, mine isn't terribly round, but you can take a second to make that slightly rounder if you want to. Then again, we're going to trim away at the point that the wire crosses over where the angle is and we're going to ensure that that round form fits completely that the end sits at the angle and then we're going to give that a hearty squish once we're happy with the shape we're going to grip halfway across open that up and it's ready for use we're now going to create the centerpiece of our summary anklet which is a double wrapped loop or a rosary link centerpiece. I've chosen to use this asymmetric, beautifully coated faceted crystal bead as my centerpiece. We're working again with 18 gauge wire and I have around six inches here in my hands. So let's slide the bead into the center of there, into the center of the wire rather. And what we're going to do is to create a gap either side of the bead and pull a right angle away. So if I push one up to one side, I'll just flip that over because it's easier for me to hold. And then what I'm going to do is grip on the other side and push the wire away. Now I do it like this so you can see the kind of gap that we need to have. A little bit of a gap either side and that just means that we're protecting our crystal and leaving ourselves space to create these double wraps. Now I'm going to show you on one side only. The tool that we need next is our round nose pliers. Now I've chosen to cut my beautiful chain reaction into sections and for my anklet I'm just using two small sections of the beautiful chain that we got in our April box. So let's slide the bead away for a second. What we're going to do is to create a reasonably large round form again down at the bottom of those round nose pliers. It's weird to have to hold the um, pliers just a little bit further away for you there. I'm going to take that tail of wire all the way around those pliers, making sure that you don't hit the box joint, you've got a nice round form. And if you want to, you can take a little bit more time than I have just to get that sitting perfectly on the end. So what we're looking for is a round form in the wire a gap between these two right angles to allow our bead to spin if we want it to. What we're going to do next is to add in a length of chain before we create the wrapped loop. Like I said, you can take a moment to make sure that your angles are perfect and the round form is perfect. What I might do just to stop the bead from sliding around is put a round form on the other end. So let's just pop those pliers in. Again, trying to avoid the box joint bring that wire all the way around so you have a round form on either end. You will now do the exact same process on either end. I'm just going to centralise this loop by slightly tilting it and then I'm going to bring in the little wrapped loop on the blue bead from my April box chain reaction. When that comes down to the little crossover section you'll just need to push that through. It's a very satisfying little snicked noise. Once you've got that in position, what we're going to do is to support across that round form. We're not squishing the wire that creates the chain reaction and we're not squishing where the wire crosses over itself. So what we're going to do now is to bring that tail all the way around the core wire. The core wire is that part which goes through the center of the bead and I'm going to take that all the way around one and a half times. What I will do actually is just link the other end in so you can see that it's relatively easy just to bring everything together. Slide that wrapped loop all the way down, push that through the gap and then we're going to grip hold of that circular form again, not squishing anywhere. 
take the tail all the way around and bring the wire across. Now the reason I take it to this stage, let's just bring that back into view, is because what we're going to do is wrap one time around the core on either end at a time and in that way we'll end up with the same number of wraps on either side as your focal bead, sorry of your focal bead rather. So if I take that all the way around one time, so that's one complete rotation, we'll move to the other side Slightly trickier with the chains in place, but I want to show you how to achieve the full project. So we now need to wrap all the way around the core on this side and pull that back over the top. I think we can get at least half a turn on both sides. So if I push the wire over and bring it underneath, there's half a turn there. I'm just going to tidy that coil up by squishing across very, very gently. And then if I turn the assembly around, I'm going to grip again across that round form, take the tail underneath, I think there's probably space for one more half turn, turn at least on both sides. So there's one half turn here. Tidy this up very carefully, not putting any pressure on the glass. So I need to do a half turn on this end as well. Pull that one over the top. And you can see now that we've got three visible wraps either side of that crystal and everything is looking neat and tidy. So let's trim away the excess, pop that into the scrap pot and the same on the other end, making sure that you are cutting only that which you wish to cut with the flush side of your cutters. The last thing to do on this central piece is to ensure that those little end sections do not stick up. So very, very cautiously going to just press that down. And I'm using the curved side of my bent chain nose pliers as it's much less likely to cause any issues with that central focal bead. Turn the assembly over and the same on this side, just very, very gently squish that last little bit down. And there you have the central section of your beautiful summery feel anklet. I have a slightly shorter section of around about three and a half inches, again, 18 gauge round wire. And I've chosen to use these two little beautiful sea glass looking pad beads in the most gorgeous aquatic blue. The technique we're going to apply is exactly the same as you did with that central segment added into either end of the chain assembly. So I've created using the exact same technique as the central section, two end pieces. And you can see it's attached to the chain on the inner segment and on the outer segment, I've got two large wrapped loops. This gives us a great deal of structural strength for your anklet in wear. I'm now going to show you how you can create your own connector for the opening part of the design. Now you can of course choose to use any ready made clasp that you have available. Let's just trim that end away, but I'm going to show you with a short section of 16 gauge wire. This is around about three and a half inches in length, and I'm going to employ my six step bail making pliers. Now around about two thirds of the way along, I'm going to pop the largest segment into position and wrap the tail of the wire over the top. That's what I'm looking to get a little sort of hook shape on the end pop that back in and draw it around so that you get this pear shape just on the end section there. What I'm going to do then is flip that over, give that wire a little bit of a warm, using the largest side again, I'm going to draw the wire around until those two wire sections meet approximately center point. So you've got this funny S shape at the moment, and that's why this piece is called an S clasp. I will just move the section along here ever so slightly because it's not quite centralized. Let's just bring that around a little bit more. There we go. We're looking for that to be reasonably centralized. I'm then going to use my round nose pliers to create small, very, very small coils just on the end. This section is a tiny bit longer, so I'm just going to trim away a small amount until those two ends sit in approximately the same position. Now, as I say, you don't have to do this yourself. You can use a ready-made clasp. Let's pop those round nose pliers in and just turn that end around. We're looking for the smallest loop that we can possibly muster. 
Warming that wire first will help you and we'll close that back up in just a second. So again, on the other end of the wire, rotating that around. If you have a hammer and block, if you joined us last year, you will have a hammer and block and then you can use that to strengthen the piece. But let's just refine that shape for now. Pop the largest form on your bail makers back in and rotate around until the very, very end touches the centre of the assembly. Exactly the same on the other side. I'll show it to you in the different orientation. Just rotate until those sides meet. So what we're looking for is for those loops to be approximately in the centre of the assembly. And you've made a very useful and effective little S clasp. And you could give that a quick hammer if you wanted that to be a bit stronger or use the strongest wire you can muster. Now this creates the complete size of your design. So one loop at one end, one loop at the other end. Now this fits my ankle. If you need a different size than that, you can trim down or use extra from the chain reaction. Let's finish up today's design by adding on those charms that we made together. Now you can obviously change up which beads you use, which elements you want to work with. You might want to have, instead of the shell discs, one of the mini mermaid tails, lots of choices. So we're going to open up that open and closable loop and find a position on the bracelet, uh, sorry, on the anklet rather, in which to add it. Now, I love the diamond shapes in this particular chain reaction. So that's where I'm going to add in my loop, pop that back over the top and then close that loop back up like so. And if you continue all the way around, adding in all of the elements we made together, you'll end up with a lovely summery anklet. So there you have it, we've completed our lovely summary anklet using our April 2023 Magical Mystery Bead Box. I hope you've enjoyed making sparkly, summery, fun anklets with me. My name is Jem, we are Jessie James Beads, I look forward to seeing you again. Bye for now.